He's the man they cannot silence, lifting the lid on the Church of Scientology's most scathing scandals. A former editor for the Village Voice, Tony Ortega, spends his life writing about their alleged shady inner sanctum from an undisclosed location. Now the journalist's explosive new book exposes the church's darkest secrets. These are the times we will all remember. Were you there? Dweller H. It's the controversial religion that continues to make headlines. And the windows all had bars put on them, and there was one entrance door that the security guard sat at 24 hours a day. Boasting 8 million members worldwide, the Church of Scientology's beliefs and practices have been the subject of endless scrutiny. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist, and it's something that you have to earn. Often characterised as a cult, the church has been accused of practising physical, psychological and financial abuse of its members for decades. I had to stay there, sleep there, it stunk and you know, there were ants crawling around. Did you sleep about an hour, two hours a night? Um, you were in such a mental state that you're very controllable, very suggestible. One man who has spent much of his life exposing their secrets is fearless journalist Tony Ortega. This is an organization that is harming people through its um, policies, and that's what I focus on, the behavior of this organization. They want to call themselves a church? Fine. So why is a church splitting up families? Speaking out about one of its most famous members, Tom Cruise, in the scathing documentary, Going Clear. It's that sort of bait and switch that people are told, oh, it's an applied philosophy to help you with your communication. Oh, yeah? So why is Tom Cruise paying a thousand bucks to have invisible aliens pulled out of his body? Now, pictures have emerged of the organization's notoriously secretive Florida headquarters. And Scientology blogger Tony Ortega and 7 News reporter Brian Seymour join us now. Good morning to you both. Morning. Tony, Hi. you've been following the Church of Scientology for a long time. We've seen uh, their Tom Cruise plucking eight aliens out of his body. How involved are these celebrities like Tom Cruise and John Travolta? You know, uh, there are numerous publications in, around the world that want to believe that Tom Cruise is leaving Scientology. But I've seen no evidence that that's true. If, if anything, Tom is more involved than ever. He just recently visited one of the churches in Columbia. I believe he is moving into Florida, away from Los Angeles, to be closer to the leader of the church. Uh, these, these celebrities really are very involved. And what about John Travolta? Still as heavily involved? John Travolta is very involved. John Travolta really admires L. Ron Hubbard and, and ascribes all of his successes to Hubbard. He's not as close to the current leader of the church, David Miscavige. Mm. Miscavige really is not friendly with, with Travolta, but Travolta is a true blue Scientology believer. Mm. Brian, you've reported on Scientology for years now. They're known to strike back. Is it a bit of an occupational hazard for you? Oh, it is, yeah. I've been followed, filmed, threatened, uh, taken to court. Uh, uh, they've attempted to injunct us, all sorts of things. I noticed in that, that little package we just had that uh, um, I think you said that they're, they're estimated to have 8 million. That's their estimate. Tony and I estimate they have about 50,000 members worldwide. They'd be lucky to have that. Um, it is um, not so much a hazard, though, because um, I think there's some safety out in the open doing stories because, again, I'm basing my stories on fact. Uh, if there's anything uh, wrong or illegal or improper, they can... They can raise those issues legitimately in many forums. So far, so good. Let's look at some. You mentioned Florida, Tony. We've got some photographs here of the new superpowers uh, building in Florida. What what is it? What happens here? It's a, a, a place of work. I mean, uh, to me, a church is a place of worship. Is right. That, is that what goes on? And they, in their public relations, this is a public relations move to re to release these photos now. It actually opened two years ago, and they call it a cathedral. But that's very misleading because a cathedral implies that the public is, is able to go in, or any Scientologist, and that's just not the case. This place was built for just a minority of Scientologists with a lot of money, who come there and spend about thirty or forty thousand dollars for a particular set of exercises and processes called superpower. And they're very odd. I've actually exposed what some of those processes are. And they're, you know, they claim that it, it makes them superhuman. 
but um, it's actually been something of a flop. Uh, there's a particular former Scientologist, Mike Rinder, that keeps track of how many people go there. And he said, and right now the best evidence is that they're only putting about 15 people a week through that place. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, it's a gigantic edifice, but so, it's- So how are they paying for all that marble? <laughs> well, Scientology has incredible amounts of money, and part of the reason is that they're tax exempt in the U.S., and they pay their workers pennies an hour, pennies an hour, and they get huge donations from millionaires. So this is kind of like the Vatican for people from the Church of Scientology, this, what we're looking at now. But only for a tiny minority. Mm -hmm. Even within Scientology can, can actually step foot in that building. And can afford it. Yeah. Right. So we're looking at $3.5 billion in assets. And you, you think the membership is declining. Is that because of all the, the bad publicity it sometimes attracts? Are people reluctant? That's a great question. Scientologists are actually very good at ignoring bad publicity. They're trained to. The main problem for Scientology today is internal, not the press. Um, Scientology is going through a crisis of faith right now. It's splitting apart. Many people are leaving. That's why its numbers are so low right now. And it really has to do with the fact that L. Ron Hubbard died 29 years ago. David Miscavige has been doing his best to keep things going, but he's running into uh, fatigue from the people that he demands money from all mm -hmm. the time, constantly. It's mm -hmm. driving people away. Let's talk about the controversial documentary, Going Clear. What impact did that have on the church, do you think? I think it's had a huge impact because it's brought a whole new audience to even think about Scientology. And it's been, you know, it's done very well all around the world. And I think it's got some governments thinking about, you know, Scientology and its, and its policies and how it treats people. So I, I think it, it has had a huge effect. But again, Scientology is very good at ignoring things like that, but their problems are more internal. There were some pretty damning ac accusations against Tom Cruise, which he's denied, Brian. Yeah, he has. Um, the accusations, uh, I guess, you have to remember, a lot of this is based on what he's been recorded saying and doing. Um, and he is a very proud recipient of the Freedom Medal of Valor, the highest honour a Scientologist can have for introducing Scientology technology to three billion people of, over one billion people of Earth. Uh, there's only one of the planets in the, the planets that Scientology deals with. But um, I, I, I guess we'd like to know more. I, I'd like to sit down and interview Tom Cruise. I'd like to give him a full and frank and open forum to explain to us, you know, what allegations are wrong, what he really does there, what he loves about it, um, what it frustrates him about it. And if Tom's watching or he gets a side of this, please, Tom, give me a call. I'm happy to sit down and have <laughs> well, an interview. I'm with sure you are. And I, can I just point out that the Australian press is so much better on this subject than particularly television press around the world. When Tom Cruise came out with his most recent movie, the only journalist that they, the company named by name that could not interview him was Brian Seymour. And you wear that like your own uh, Medal of Valor, don't you, Brian? <laughs> do you, do you know I can tell you know, you know, that you do. Do, 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 do you know what? You know, uh, you know I, I, really, I really don't. I'd much prefer, I, I'd love to get in yeah, front sure. of him. You just want to get to the bottom of it. Yes. Did you, what backlash did you receive after that documentary aired? Did, mm. you, you say that you write from an undisclosed location. It all sounds very cloak and dagger. I take, I take uh, you know, basic precautions because I have had some harassment over the years. Uh, when the movie first came out uh, earlier this year, it was the other people in the film that got a lot of harassment. Mm -hmm. Recently, it started up against me again. Um, I think it's just something that, as Brian was saying earlier, you're actually safer just continuing to be out in the open and doing the work that you can. Mm -hmm. The Church of Scientology, of course, deny all these claims. They call this a propaganda film. Do you think they've been unfairly targeted? No, I mean, that's what Scientology says about anything. I mean, when my book came out, rather than address any of the facts in it, they just called me names. And that's just how they deal with anything. Because you're, you wrote The Unbreakable Miss Lovely. Uh, what's that book about? My book is about the history of harassment that Scientology has um, visited on people it considers enemies, in particular mm -hmm. a woman named Paulette Cooper. She was one of the first ones to expose Scientology with a book in 1971 called The Scandal of Scientology. The, uh, the church then tried to destroy her in many ways for many years. And uh, although her story is fairly well known among people that study Scientology, I found that there was a lot that had never been gotten into mm. in depth. And mm. so she cooperated with me and I wrote this book about her and her life, going all the way back to how she survived the Holocaust as a young child, how she survived all these attempts to destroy her by Scientology. And she's a really an inspirational woman. And actress mm. Leah Rimini is soon to release a tell-all memoir after leaving the Church of Scientology. You broke the story about her leaving after 30-odd years. Why did she leave? 
You know, it was a series of events that started with uh, the wedding of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes in 2006, actually. She saw some things that she didn't like, and when she tried to ask questions about it, she was stunned at how she was mistreated by the church, and that began her process of thinking about what was wrong with Scientology. It still took several more years before she finally left, and I, you know, I think this book is going to be really explosive. What did she say that she didn't like? Well, at the wedding, what she saw was that um, da uh, Tom Cruise's best man at the wedding was David Miscavige, the leader of the church. And he was there without his wife, Shelley. And so uh, Leah asked about that and was told that she didn't have the rank to even ask that question. It turns out that Miscavige had banished his wife the year before to a little compound uh, above Los Angeles. And she's been there for 10 years. Um, he somehow the is that a fact? We know that to be a fact. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I have multiple lines of evidence that suggest to me that's where she has been, okay. and there, it is. There's no question that she has not been seen in it's public. Not been seen in public for ten since years. Ten, since 2005, mm -hmm. she she was allowed out for two days in 2000, summer of 2007, to go to the funeral of her father. Other than that, she's been at no church events, no public church facilities, and not seen in public. But I have multiple lines of evidence to tell me that's where she is. She's been at this one little compound above Los Angeles. And, and Brian, so that would uh, suggest punishment of some kind. What do we know, Brian, about punishment in the church? Well, if they don't like what you do... What we would regard as some very minor, inconsequential uh, infractions are mm -hmm. serious issues dealt with very severely within the Church of Scientology. That is a matter of record. Things like... Um, um, perhaps uh, looking at someone, David Miscavige, the wrong way, saying something out of turn, <clears throat> asking a question he's uncomfortable with. That can land you in um, sec checking, which involves um, several hours a day of one-on-one uh, -on -one intense questioning and interrogation uh, over many weeks, and it can cost tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's what happened to Leah Rimini. Mm. Um, I think she ended up with a bill for three hundred thousand dollars. She was she checking. was put through three months of interrogation and behavior mm. modification, <clears throat> and was then billed three hundred thousand dollars. And that's, so that's what, another reason why she left. And that's what they're planning. That's what they're church planning church here in. Australia, a, that's right. That's what they're planning here in Australia. They're tax free here too. <clears throat> um, we'll be having a story tonight on Seven News. Um, that'll detail some of the plans they have in store for Australia. And then uh, Tony's off on his national book tour for the Unbreakable Miss Lovely, and I'll be joining him at a few of those dates. All right. Thank you very much, Brian and Tony, for joining us this morning. Fascinating stuff. We'll watch 7 News tonight Seven for News more tonight. of their, uh, their Australian plans. Okay. Mm -hmm.